Who is more powerful? The American Mafia or the Sinaloa Cartel? Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know. Subanse a la suburban. Let's get this video on the road. What's up, guys? What is power? How do you even measure power in two very, very big organizations like the American Mafia and the Sinaloa Cartel? People have been asking me this question day in and day out. That, who is more powerful? If you guys have not been watching my channel, I suggest you start going back, start watching some of my old videos because it ties in with everything we talk about on this channel, whether it's organized crime, prison, federal, state, cartel, gangs. It all ties in into one big, big thing. You know, for the cartel, there was a lot of, I guess you could say, stripes, but we're talking in a very, very different, different ground, different uh, way of war, just a whole different. Yes, the cartel is known for its murders, but also the mob. The mafia was known for its murders also. The only thing with them is that they actually, they kept it on the down low. They, they killed in secret and hid the bodies. People just didn't, didn't see that person no more, so they knew what was up. The cartel does it out in the open because their main thing is to inflict fear. That's how you control everything. Uh, the Mexican uh, government officials that they have in Mexico paid off. You know, the mafia also had a lot of American politicians and judges in their pockets. So the cartel is focused on one product and that is getting drugs into the U.S. That's what their main concern is, that's what their focus is, and that's what it was. For the American Mafia, they had a several ways of getting paid because they were into gambling, I mean, uh, West, uh, waste management, construction. I mean, they, they said no to drugs for a very long time until the new generation uh, of you know, younger guys came in and started sneaking in the drugs, but they had really big consequences for anybody that got caught, you know, selling drugs, because their main thing was to not make it hot. You know, they were able to do what they were doing, making money and, and all that stuff. I mean, I mean, look at Vegas. They opened up one of the biggest gambling casinos where billions and billions of dollars go through, and they did it legit did some of them get caught yeah but most of them did it legit so about the money i mean it's like a negative and a positive like here i have a, a ton of a billion dollars here i have you know 500 million but this 500 million i could actually spend it because it's actually clean this one i can't spend it because i, I there's no way to prove that i made it so you know like I said, different different times, dis different ways of war. Um, does the cartel, does the Sinaloa cartel have a shitload of money? Yeah, they do. But also the mob did have a, a, a shitload of money. Also, a lot of those cats, older cats that passed away, they were still worth millions of dollars. So maybe not as much, but 
they were doing it. Now, on experience of war, I would have to give it to the cartel. Why? Because they're going through it every day. Like, every kid that starts new with them gets trained by their special forces guys. And they're at war 24-7. So not, so not only are they used to the war, they're used to the violence too. So that's that's really, really big, man, because they're constantly in training every day. So if a war was a kick out right now, you know, I, I would have to give it to the cartel. You know, like I've said, I've said it in the past, a lot of a lot of these criminal organizations have different different means, different jobs, just different tactics to do the things that they needed to do. And um, the cartels obviously have been around for a very long, long time, and they've been bringing you know whatever needed to be brought to United States, you know, from liquor to drugs to all these things. But there's more of a of a scare tactic used over there to keep the people in line pretty much you know all, all the murders the beheadings all that is a really big big uh, scare tactic it's a military tactic you know um, people won't cooperate won't won't speak won't say what they've seen nothing like that so it, it works in their favor now with the mob having a clubhouse in their neighborhood or a restaurant where everybody was going and, and seeing them you know it's a different kind of fear because at the same time they love and respect you because you're from the neighborhood but they're also afraid of what you could do to them because so many people know you or you know too many people so it's a different it's just a different type of attack and you know, there's there's some actually the uh, some great books out there that are are based on all these tactics, and you know a lot of them I read in prison. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them I read in prison, and you know, I think for for a fact the American mafia biggest biggest trick and what they wanted to do was actually convince the federal government that they they did not exist that they were not around, that they were making money, and they just wanted to leave their, their children or grandchildren set for life. This is why they opened really big, you know, waste management companies, construction companies that were doing uh, big jobs, not no little fucking jobs, you know, big jobs for the city, the bridge, all those buildings. So, you know, that's that was one of their biggest tactics was actually disappearing and just become, becoming something of the past where they start to make movies about them and remembering their times and all this stuff and this is what's gonna happen you know also with the cartel that the cartel is gonna come into an era where everything's gonna be based on them movies shows uh, I mean you name it <clears throat> and who knows who's gonna take over after that but if I had to decide who is more powerful and who would win if we went to war I would have to say the cartel money violence and a very long stretch not only in the United States and Mexico but in prison also very long long stretch I would have to give it to the Sinaloa cartel that they would win and take care of business yeah nothing personal you know it's just the way I look at it and my run-ins with them and everything in general, they, they are everywhere. They, they are literally everywhere and there would be no relocation. There would be none of that stuff. So, you know, maybe we could get a second opinion on here. Maybe we could ask, you know, Sammy the Bull what he thinks. What he thinks about who would be more powerful. But. That's just my two cents. I am Ron Strong. My name's JC. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here, free, not gangbanging, not 
killing nobody, staying out of prison, staying sober, and just enjoying life. I'll catch you guys in the rebound.